tonight on KSL Outdoors. It's September, fall is approaching, bulls are ready, and tags are getting filled. <laughs> tonight, we look back at some of our favorite elk hunts from the past few years. I'm Adam Eagle, and let's go hunting. KSL Outdoors with Adam Eakle is brought to you by your local Ford stores. Hey, thanks for tuning in to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eakle. Well, September is here. It's a busy time for us here in the outdoors department. I usually take a few weeks off to go guide elk hunters, and this year was, was much of the same. So we decided to show you some of our best elk hunts from the past few years. The first one is a pretty emotional story about a young man who wanted to go elk hunting. You see, Officer Doug Barney was killed in the line of duty in 2016. His son Jack was just turning of age and now his dad was gone. So we teamed up with our friend Gabe Patterson and Bob Thomas and took him on a hunt down in central Utah on the Johnson's Mountain Ranch and gave Jack one heck of a hunt. Put the smack daddy on him, you ready? Let's go, let's do this. It's day two. We've woke to a beautiful morning. There's no wind and the elk are going nuts. He's one of the better bulls we've seen. This one or that one. You know, it's so neat to hunt these animals, not just drive up and shoot them. So Jack got to experience a full on hunt. Belly crawling this morning. That elk played cat and mouse like them bulls do. They know where they're safe. And he worked up and down the ridge, chasing bulls, chasing cows. Okay, 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 get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready right there. Don't shoot them. That's a good ball. Okay. That might be, he might be over 300. Four or five times we put it, we were on our bellies trying to put a sneak on this elk. How good your rest? I was frazzled, I, I couldn't take it another second, you know, I, I was killing me and Jack's calm as a cucumber laying behind that scope. Ah, uh, shoot. I want to get him to stop. There he is. Is that him? So see how there's a line right behind his front shoulder? Can you hit that crease? Maybe. Well, no, it ain't a maybe, buddy. Yeah, so I call about taking it. Okay. He wants to wait. Good call. For a 13-year-old kid to say, no, I'll wait for a better shot. That's, I couldn't do that. Right at the last, I told Jack, if he takes one step, we had a tree block on his shoulder. If he takes one step, and man, oh man, that old boy took one step. Come on, buddy, come on. How's you... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the relief that I felt and the happiness at that moment, unbelievable. I mean, it, that's something I'll remember for the rest of my life. What do you think of that? <laughs> That's why we do this. <laughs> See his oh, antlers? Wow, <laughs> Nailed him. Nailed him. <laughs> what a shot. Oh, he's a pretty bull. To be able to come and be part of something like this is, is a dream. Is a dream for me. Show everybody what you put in your pocket. Oh, yeah. I got yes, my yes. lucky charm right up here. Your dad's coin? Uh-huh. Dear old dad's hanging tight with you. Yeah. Very cool, dude. I think your dad would be pretty proud, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. He was really proud of us. That's one of the things I remember a lot. He always pushed us and just thought we were the best, like. He was a really good man, and I just really want to be like him. Marie! Who's sleeping in? He is big! No tell you something kind of on a personal note my marriage fell apart a couple months ago and being up here with this family is the best I've slept in two months um, so I think I owe them a, a thank you funny how doing something nice for another family 
can help you. In a few weeks, we'll be headed back down to Johnson's Mountain Ranch to give another young hunter the same chance as Jack. I can't wait to show it to you. Hey, time now for tonight's climate quiz question. There are 10 subspecies of elk in the world, six from North America and four from Asia. Two North American subspecies, the Eastern Elk and the Merriam's Elk subspecies, have been extinct for at least a century. Our climate quiz question tonight is, can you name the remaining four subspecies of elk in North America. Now, once you know the name of these four subspecies, log on to our KSL Outdoors Facebook page, give us all four correct answers. We'll then randomly select and announce a winner on our page the following week. The winner set to walk away with a Climate Static V sleeping pad. KSL Outdoors, powered by Ford, we'll be right back on another big bull hunt. KSL Outdoors is also brought to you by Smith and Edwards, Fish Tech Outfitters, Utah State Parks, Burt Brothers, Climate, King's Camo, and Camp Chef. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Equal. You know, for the past 15 or 16 years, every September, I take a few weeks off to go guide elk hunters on our premier CWMU here in Utah. A couple years ago, I met a couple of cool brothers, Pete and Paul Nordhoff. It may have been a quick hunt, but boy, did we have a lot of fun. On this CWMU, guides take care of everything, quarter, cape, and haul out the meat after Scott's bull is bagged and in the truck. It's finally Pete's turn. It's okay to walk down there. Let's go then. I think he's right. Safety is still on. Pete and I hike to the bottom of this draw and find ourselves right in the middle of three different herds. The bull on the left looks to be older, heavier, and a perfect bull for Pete. Now we just need to find our way through all the elk to get him a shot. That one on the skyline's pretty. He's young though, he's a really young bull. We have four mature bulls all around us, but the heavier bull just won't stop and give us a shot. No, that's not him. No. Finally, it's getting too late to see, and Pete and I decide to back off. The next morning, we find ourselves back where we'd left the elk the night before. Off in the bottom, we hear two elk going at it. It isn't the big heavy bull from the night before, but he looks to be pretty good. Pete and I move closer overlooking a small pond and immediately find a bull. Don't shoot with that cow there. We want him outside. The bull is right in the middle of the pond taking a drink, just downhill 80 yards, just out of view of the camera. Okay, there, keep it that way. It's a good shot. Good shot. Rack another one? Rack another one? Okay, yeah. Yeah, just watch, watch, watch. Come here. Safety on, safety on, safety on. What was that? 80 yards? 100 yards? I don't know. <laughs> I think we're done, sir. <laughs> Congratulations. That's right. that was awesome. pretty fun. What'd you think of that? Yeah, that was real fun. Not bad, huh? Yeah, the whole day. Yesterday, last night, I never forget any of it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I can't wait to get home and show Chad, my boy. Look how big he is around here at the base. Yeah. That's a uh, that's nice, nice elk. I'm really happy with him. The nice thing about this hunt was that we just didn't get out of the truck, and there he was. I mean, we could hear him, and we stalked him, and we went over a couple of ridges, and we could still hear him, and we could see him going over. I mean, it was just exciting for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes. It was wonderful. You know, people, including my wife, always ask why I continue to guide elk hunters, and I tell them it's just, I have a passion for elk, and you know, you don't draw a tag in Utah every year, so it's my chance to get out and hunt with like-minded people like Pete and Paul, just great, good, down-to-earth guys, and turns out a lot of these guys I go hunting with turn out to be some of my best friends. Hey, coming up on KSL Outdoors, one last hunt, we head out with the warden, but first, back to the guys at Fish Tech for tonight's fishing report. Hi, I'm Jake Dreyfus from Fish Tech. 
and fall is in the air. And with fall, one of my favorite times of the year is around the corner, streamer fishing. The best rod to fish streamers with is a nine foot six weight or seven weight. You pair this with a sinking tip that has a large shooting head so you can turn over big flies. My favorite is this Scientific Angler's Sonar line or this Airflow Streamer Max line. If you don't have a sinking tip or a six weight rod, what you can do is use a floating line like a Rio Grande and pair it with one of these sink tip leaders. If you do have a six or seven weight rod, good news for you, you get to throw big flies. Some of my favorites are sex dungeons, sculpzillas, and sparkle minnows. When you're fishing streamers, it's very important that you're throwing them directly across stream or three quarters downstream. This way, your fly is gonna swing and get into the zone. Um, if you don't have a big rod and you're fishing with a four or five weight, you'll just have to throw little woolly buggers, zonkers, or patterns of the like. If you wanna learn more about techniques and tactics for catching big browns on streamers this fall, come down to Fish Tech and we can help you out. Here's tonight's fishing line. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors. I'm Adam Eagle. You know, every chance I get, I try to include my family in the show, get them out with me doing some things outdoors. And a few years ago, my wife drew a pretty coveted elk tag here in Utah. It was a chance for me to show her why I leave her and the kids every September for three, four weeks a year to go chase elk. And boy, we had, uh, we had a pretty good hunt. We had, a hard, 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 hard. We had a fun ATV ride, yeah. right? Scared you a little he scared bit. me. It wasn't going that I'm bad. Like seat belt, seat belt. <laughs> it's day three, and we've gone into an area that we haven't hunted. But my buddy Brett has told us about a couple of bulls in the area that are big and old. Just what we're looking for. We shoot him. He's pretty. Is he close enough? This cool bull is one that Brett told us about. He was a big one. He was a little far away, like 450. I'd only practiced to 300. You know, I mean, he was standing there, just broadside, just like I would like him, but. That's a long shot. It was a long shot. So we passed on him, and it was just a brief opportunity, and then he went around the mountain. With so, his cows, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we followed, uh, hoping to call him back down, but he didn't, mm -hmm. and another one came in. He was probably about 40 yards. 40 yards. <laughs> staring right at me. No, 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 no. So he started, we started moving again. There was a couple different bugles. And then he came out of the clearing area. He was facing us. I got my sights on him and steady. He had me wait until he went broadside, so he shouldn't have gone broadside. <laughs> I practiced for that. <laughs> Good job. Back him up. Back him up. Hit him again. Hit him again. Right there, through the trees. Just right in the side. Take your time. He's not going anywhere. Nice shot. Boom! <laughs> he did it. He's rolling down. I don't know what he is, but he's a good bull. Standing up even. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't go far. Ew. What? He's smelly. He stinks. Mm -hmm. Congrats, baby. Thanks. Nice bull. Yeah. Oh, pretty. Nice six by six. 
Yeah. Cool. Ah, I'm excited. And awesome. you know what? I'm looking at your shot. Let's see where I got Perfect. it. Perfect. We were just saying, this is your first bull ever. First elk. Yeah. Can you believe it? <laughs> you were worried that I wasn't going to shoot it, weren't, weren't you? <laughs> she shot a stag in New Zealand and uh, about, I don't know, eight, nine years ago with her buddy Tony, and you cried. I, I did. No was, crying this time. No crying this time. There's no crying in hunting. Oh. But well. you weren't cold. I was worried you're gonna, you worried you're going to be cold. I was cold. worried, but you know, King's Camel hooked me up. So thank you. And the best part is we got help on the way to help us pack this bull out. I love it. <laughs> me too. <laughs> hey, more here from the mountain in a moment, but first, down a different trail in tonight's Utah Field Guide. Hey guys, Christmas Smith and Edwards here. We're here to talk about the fall season. It's starting, hunting season is starting, and I'm here to talk about after the fall season, what you're gonna do with your trophy once you get it home. New product from Logan, Utah, called Dead On Display, helps you mount these European mounts to your wall securely and easily, or you can take them like this javelina skull and mount them on a side table. So pretty cool product. It works really, really simply. It's basically an eye bolt. You take it, an eye bolt, you bolt into the back of the skull and it just slides right over that bracket right there and hangs really secure and uh, really, really safe. The basic steps of how that works, you got your bolt or your nut that you would slide in there, pull that string, don't let the string go, that's probably rule number one. Get the eye bolt to start and go in. Once you get it there and secure, you don't have to be super secure with it. You don't want to damage the skull. You just got to get it in there and get it tight and snug. Not even super snug, just tight. And then it's just going to hang right over that bracket right there. So, so once you get that bear hung there or the skull hung, it's not going anywhere. It is super secure. You can, kids can bang it, smack it, bounce balls off the wall. It's not going anywhere. And your trophy is going to be secure and safe. Hey, for more products or anything else we can help you out with this fall, come down to Smith & Edwards, two locations, Ogden or Salt Lake, or online, smithandedwards.com. Boy, I need to call old Eubanks and order up some rain. It has been dry and hot this September. It's made the rut actually pretty tough here in Utah, hearing it from a bunch of different people across the state. Hey, let's check that recreation forecast now by turning it over to Kevin in the weather department. Welcome back to KSL Outdoors, back here on the Elk Hunts. I'm Adam Meikle. Hey, we've got a lot of things coming up with the fall approaching. Make sure to check our outdoors calendar page right there on our website at ksltv.com. Hey, and while you're out this year, don't forget to uh, pack a camera along, whether it's picking up a shed like this little bull I picked up yesterday or out with your family and friends and enjoying the beautiful colors, fall colors we got going on right now. Make sure to take lots of snapshots, submit them to our snapshot contest. You might walk away with our big prize from Cam Chef. Now the best of the week as we turn it over to you, our snapshot of the week. We kick it off with an old friend of the show and a big bull. Lane Larkin Sr. finally, after 53 years of hunting elk and max points, drew a limited entry elk tag. After drawing the tag, Lane found out that he needed back surgery. He decided to forego the surgery and hunt, and boy is he glad he did. With his son and grandson by his side and some amazing hunting buddies, Lane bagged this 358 inch monster. Lane Jr. says there wasn't a dry eye on the mountain as they walked up to his dad's bull. After dodging forest fires and smoke-filled air and at times just wanting to give up, Roger Goodwin was fortunate to connect with this great archery bull elk. Through all the ups and downs and the thrill of the hunt, what Roger will cherish the most is being able to spend the time with his kids, Trace and Casey, and doing his part to pass down this family tradition. Young. Cole DeCastro took his first buck deer on this year's archery deer hunt on 9-11. Cole was commenting as he sat in the blind that he had learned about September 11, 2001 in his history class. This buck made for a late school night, but the DeCastro say it was well worth it. Kai Decker found a few great bucks on the opener of the archery deer hunt, but was never in the right spot. Kai had to leave to make his first day of his junior year of high school, but was back on the mountain the next weekend and in the right spot this time. Kai made a great 45 yard shot and his buck ran just 100 yards and was done. The Decker family say there is nothing better than the mountains and family. But our winner tonight shot by far the biggest buck he's ever shot and he did it with his bow. 
Brad Porter has been archery hunting for just five years, and this is his first buck with a bow, and he shot it on a general season unit. The buck scores 181 and 2 eighths. Brad says he loves the beautiful velvet antlers and huge three and a half and four inch eye guards on his beautiful buck. Well, Brad, to help you remember your day on the hunt, we're sending you our cool prize from Camp Chef for having just won the Snapshot of the Week. Remember, submit your pictures or video, plus an explanation of your latest outdoor adventures, online at ksltv.com. The winner each week wins the new Stryker Multi-Fuel Stove in King's Camo, perfect for a car camp or to take on the hunt. Plus, the winner is also entered into our Ford Trucks quarterly Facebook giveaway for a Camp Chef pellet grill. From the back country to your back patio, Camp Chef, the way to cook outdoors. Well, we hope you enjoyed some of our best elk hunts over the past five or six years. We're actually up on an elk hunt right now, up on the Wasatch. A muzzleloader hunt is going on. My good buddy Kevin Pritchett from King's Camel has a muzzleloader tag. Busy time, but boy is it fun. I'm Adam Eco, KSL Outdoors. We'll see you next weekend. Good night.